This is Fair TV. I'm Janine Jackson. The revelations of NSA whistleblower Edward Snowden about secret data gathering on millions of Americans were reported throughout the media. But that doesn't mean everyone in the press is a fan. Some high-profile pundits have lined up to denounce Snowden. The New York Times' David Brooks said Snowden was a high school dropout who betrayed the Constitution and doesn't visit his mother enough. The Washington Post's Richard Cohen described Snowden as a cross-dressing Little Red Riding Hood whom history would forget. And for The New Yorker's Jeffrey Tubin, Snowden is a grandiose narcissist who deserves to be in prison. There really was no shortage of this psychoanalytic approach. This is from ABC. He's very well-spoken, very sharp, and has this self-absorbed, uh, egotistical flavor to what he's saying. And he's doing it to be the hero. When they weren't doing that, media were telling us there's really nothing to see here. CBS Evening News had their network security analyst come on to explain that the intelligence programs at issue are legal and effective. They just didn't tell viewers he was a former counterterrorism official from the George W. Bush administration, and the programs he was defending were ones that he supervised. Well, for many, the point seemed to be that Snowden should have blown the whistle differently. Here's Jeffrey Tubin. The public has a right to know, but there are, the way to bring it to public attention is not to commit crimes. And yes, it is possible he wouldn't get as much attention if he simply went to the senators like Jeff Merkley, like uh, Senator Udall, who care deeply about this issue and are doing it the right way. Instead, he just threw this stuff out to newspaper reporters at The Washington Post and The Guardian. So Snowden should have just gone to Congress with news of the secret surveillance program that the head of intelligence has just acknowledged lying to Congress about and that Congress people themselves have repeatedly said they can't speak of. It's not clear whether Tubin really thinks that would have been the right way to get to Snowden's stated goal of informing the public or if he thinks that really wasn't the right goal to begin with. Well, there are elections in Iran, which led MSNBC's Rachel Maddow to say this. The current president of Iran has had the job for the last eight years, Mahmoud Ahmadinejad. He's known around the world for defending Iran's pursuit of nuclear weapons. Now, the facts about Iran should be clear by now. Some political leaders make claims about weapons, but there is no solid evidence that Iran is developing a weapons program. As to Maddow's specific claim, that's just wrong. Ahmadinejad has long denied, emphatically, that the country has any intention of building a bomb. A Google search would turn up plenty of examples, like this interview from CBS last year that makes the point pretty clear in the headline. Or a Reuters piece that included this quote from Ahmadinejad. The Iranian nation is not seeking an atomic bomb, nor do they need to build an atomic bomb. For defending ourselves, we do not need a nuclear weapon. Well, if Maddow has evidence of Ahmadinejad saying the polar opposite somewhere else, she should provide it. Otherwise, this is a fundamental error that she should correct. And finally, the slippery slope from journalism to hucksterism got a little more grease this week when the Washington Post announced a new feature called Sponsored Views that will allow organizations to post commentary related to or in response to content from the Washington Post's opinion section. Well, the sponsored view will appear at the bottom of an online column from the paper's opinion page, giving those who pony up for it an opportunity to place their message in front of key constituents. Post President and GM Steve Hill says that putting the paid-for columns in with the regular ones gives them unparalleled contextual relevance, while still keeping the lines between news and sponsored messages crystal clear. If you're already scratching your head over this, the paper adds that advertisers must agree to not make any erroneous factual assertions, and that the Post reserves the right to require substantiation for any factual assertions within a sponsored view. So, the paid columns aren't news, they're ads but we're going to submit them to some news standards and we're going to mix them in with other news as responses to columns, but they're not news, 
their ads. Well, like the man said, crystal clear. I'm Janine Jackson. This is Fair TV.